I suppose just first of all, is there any satisfaction in reaching this stage at all, or is it all about going all the way tomorrow? No, I think, of course, it, there is satisfaction. Uh, it's kind of been a bit of a hurdle for us, the quarterfinal. Um, we've been on the wrong end of a few, and I think the positive thing is taking that forward and kind of those big games um, is a really good experience to come out the other side as a team um, that we can take forward tomorrow. And, and look, we're here to win the competition tomorrow. Um, yeah, that's what we're focused on. And uh, yeah, I think we've got a really good chance if, if we play our best cricket. Uh, thoughts on uh, Suzuki's not having Rashid Khan? I mean, it's obviously still pretty important bowling attack, but is it a bit of a relief that you don't have to Pad up against him tomorrow. Well, I'd be lying if I said it wasn't ideal. Let's be honest. Um, it definitely does help. He's he's been as good as he has been over the last few years, uh, number one in the world. Um, of course, that's that's a slight positive. But as you said, they've got a kind of um, very very strong bowling attack. Uh, lots of experience, international experience, and CJ and and Tamal as well. So um, look, we. Uh, Two very good teams going head to head. Uh, it should be a great game. Lovely stuff. Uh, I'll let someone else jump in. I might jump in a bit there. Uh... I can go if you want. Go for it. Um, Sam, it, it, how did how did you kind of get over this the uh, the quarter final issues? It, it, the finals day has been that kind of elusive prize for your Kent team for quite a long time, hasn't it? How, how did you get over it, and how uh, how nice did it feel to be here? Yeah, it's great. Um, it is. It has been elusive, unfortunately, but I think that's just a, a show of where we've kind of evolved as a team and as a group. Um, it's just taken a couple of years, I think, for people to, um, for the group to move forward and, and gain the experience that's needed in those big games. Um, and I think that was the difference, actually, is against a very good Warwickshire side that had obviously Wokes and Bresden experienced on their side. I think in T20 cricket and the short formats anyway, experience counts for a lot. So um, I think it's just a matter of quite a few of the young guys, younger guys, um, gaining that experience in, in big games in front of big crowds um, and they can kind of take that forward. Uh, I think that's one thing that we've gained over the last few years and as a group, uh, the belief as well of, of winning consistently has really, really helped the group. Um, look, we won the... South Group, uh, we've qualified a lot over the last few years and we've won a lot of games of cricket. So confidence has come from that. Um, and look, it's just a matter of taking that forward and, and playing well um, tomorrow. Is this the best Kent T20 outfit you've been part of? It'd be close, of course. Um, yeah, I think so. Uh, in terms of all-rounded, uh, look, it's a shame that we haven't got Adam Milne, um, arguably in my opinion, being one of the best um, death bowlers around the country, well, in the world, actually, in the last kind of couple of years. And um, I know I'm biased because he's a Kent boy, but you just see how he's kind of moved forward and um, he's kind of dominated the 100 this year as well. So it's a shame that we haven't got him. Um, but I think that's where we've moved forward as a group, that um, we've got depth and, and guys that can step in who can absolutely fill those boots so um from a batting point of view i think we've always had a really strong batting lineup it's probably the bowling element that's been our weaker suit and uh the guys like matt milnes fred Clarkson have really taken on the ownership of of leading our bowling attack and and how they've moved forward in the last couple of years has been phenomenal so um i, I suppose that's probably our biggest area of improvement um and it's great to see those young guys kind of take those opportunities and just from a, a personal point of view of you, pre presumably as soon as this is done, you're off to the IPL and away for about, I, I don't know, six months? <laughs> Till February the 6th, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I leave on Monday morning uh, straight to the IPL, six days of quarantine, and then, um, yeah, off, off for a winter away. So, yeah, it's going to be a pretty hectic time, but um, hopefully it can sign off the England's, English summer with a, uh, with a T20 win. Thanks, Will. John, we'll go to you and then uh, Matt after that. Yeah, I'm not doing it. Um, I was having trouble, but it uh, keeps dropping out here, even though I've got super powered fiber optic uh, broadband at home. Anyway, um, 
uh, you captained in the hundred, uh, Sam, and obviously captaining in the T Twenty Blast. Can you compare the two competitions? In what respect, John? In terms of um, crowds and enjoyment, and, and also the, the feeling of playing for, for a team. I mean, do you get more satisfaction when Kent win than when Oval Invincibles win? Um, look, I've been I've been at the club. I've been at Kent since the age of eight. Um, like this club means a lot to me. So uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say that kind of playing for Kent actually does mean a lot. Um, that's not to say any other club or franchise that I play for um, means, I wouldn't say, even say means less. It, it's just a different kind of feeling, I think. Um, I'm a Kent boy through and through. So you can appreciate that, yeah, that has obviously kind of different emotions attached to it. Um, I think, look, the 100 was a great success. I think it was a phenomenal competition and it exposed a lot of young players um, to to big crowds, to big moments. Um, and Matt Milnes is a great example, I think, in terms of how he bowled in the course final uh, against Warwickshire, but also um, how he's kind of developed. He came in his first, you know, he's played for Kent in the 50 over competition. The next night he was playing in front of a packed crowd at the Kia Oval. And for guys to be exposed to 25,000 people and bowling at Jason Roy and getting him out first ball, it's been a huge benefit for Kent, I think, for him to be exposed to occasions like that. So tomorrow, I mean, look, I'm hoping that tomorrow he just takes up um, in his stride that I'm sure he will. But I think that's been the huge positive for a lot of younger guys who haven't necessarily been exposed to those environments before. Um, they're very, I think the T20 blast has produced so many quality cricketers and it's been the production line of England white ball cricket in the last five, seven years or whatever. And we've seen the success that the England white ball teams have had. Um, and that's hugely down to the, a T20 blast and, and and guys having consistent opportunities. So, um, yeah, that's that's not going to change. And finals day, even though I haven't been here before, um, it looks like one of the best days in the calendar as well and um, is as good a day as any kind of franchise tournament around, I think, the whole buzz about it. So, um, so very different. Every competition has positives and negatives, I'm sure. But the one thing I can say is, is how much how many top quality cricketers have come through the T20 blast and through this competition and finals day uh, is a credit to, to the comp really. I can just ask, um, Zach obviously had a, I suppose, a disappointing time with England in, uh, in the test matches when he played. Uh, has he been since he's come back to Kent? As always, Zach has been um, as professional as anyone. Um, he, he sets his standards so high. Um, and has the mentality of an international cricketer. That's that's how he sees himself. That's how we see him. And that's the standards he sets for himself. And um, look, every cricketer, Joe Root, um, I mean, the list is endless. People get dropped and fall out of international reckoning and come back a much, much better player. And, and I've got no doubt that that will be the case for Zach. Um, you don't score 260 or whatever in a test match against a top quality bowling attack and all of a sudden you become a bad player of a night. Um, form is, is obviously goes in waves and as a young player, you do, I think, learn the hard way. But um, certainly from his point of view, he's been, been in the runs the last week and uh, that's great for his confidence. But uh, I've got no doubt that coming into tomorrow, um, he's the kind of player that will really relish a, an opportunity like that and, and loves the stage as well. So, um, as always, Zach, is, Zach has been unbelievable around our group and is a huge asset to us. Thanks, John. Matt, did you want to uh, kick us off? Yeah, um, I, was, um, uh, I think Kent, Kent's last White Bull Trophy 2007. wondered if you have any memories of that um, and then what it would mean to end that sort of, I guess, drought tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um... Nimo, Nimo, who was head physio back then, he sat there just giving it at that one. And uh, we've all seen the photos of him after that. Um, so I, I, it would mean it would mean a lot, it would mean a huge amount, of course. Uh, look, we missed out at Lords a few years ago and um, got outplayed by Hampshire on that day. But yeah, it, we've kind of been threatening for quite a while in terms of what we've been building, uh, in terms of the group that we've got. Um, 
so yeah, as as a bloke who's been at the club since the age of eight, it would mean everything. So um, I've got no doubt that if we if we play well, we stick to what we're good at, um, that we'll absolutely have as good a chance as anyone. Um, you don't win the South Group for South teams. Um, we we won the South Group comfortably, and look, we should take a huge amount of confidence in that. Um, we play really good cricket all year, and it's just a matter of translating that into into tomorrow. Um, I think you've said a few times over the years that you've probably not played as much for Kent as you'd have liked since becoming club captain, but I guess there is that sort of off-field element to the role as well. Could you sort of outline some of that, uh, what you do behind the scenes, recruiting and that sort of thing? Yeah, how long have you got? <laughs> um, no, I think it is, it's been a huge advantage, I think, over the years of, of playing in different environments and around the world that you get to meet um, a lot of phenomenal people um so it makes recruitment a hell of a lot easier for sure that you get to know the kind of characters that uh would fit into our group and um and really elevate our group to the next level and i mean adam milne is a perfect example of that um so yeah look the whole club structure changed a few years ago and it kind of needed to get up to um this kind of century in terms of Paul Downton coming in, his impact has been huge. Uh, the accountability of a cricket director, uh, director of cricket, sorry. Um, and that whole structure has really helped us just worry about things on the pitch and and um, kind of strategize moving forward as well. It's made it, made it far less uh, coach and captain led. And a lot of the off field stuff's taken off our plate, which has helped hugely. So, um, so yeah, it's just a matter of having it more of a uh, coach, captain, and director cricket led conversation, um, and it, it just works far better, and, and that's been a huge impact. Um, I guess uh, for you personally, maybe another slightly strange year with stuff like IPL getting abandoned, you know, being in and out of England squads. I think you had COVID as well. Just interested to hear your reflections on this summer as a whole. Yeah, so came back, did um, did 10 days quarantine at Heathrow, watching the planes go over, uh, which wasn't much fun. Um, then played a game for Kent and then all of a sudden was in the test bubble. Um, like you said, got covid uh, during the Pakistan, well, just before the Pakistan series. So it's been pretty eventful, I'm not going to lie, and um, haven't played probably as much as I would have liked, but look, it, it's kind of stuff that's been out of my control, unfortunately. And um, and to be, for me, to be around that um, test bubble was was amazing and a different experience, a different um, environment for sure, and one that I really enjoyed and kind of relished, really. So... Uh, it's definitely given me more motivation and um, enthusiasm for playing longer form of format cricket um, and kind of, yeah, who knows, there might be opportunities down the line that uh, might present themselves. So uh, I, I think it's a bit of motivation, certainly having that carrot dangled a little bit closer to you um, as opposed to feeling so far away. So, um, so yeah, I, it's been an enjoyable summer and look, we're, we're, we're where we are. Uh, the last few weeks has been really, really great to get some wins um, in the county championship for Kent. Uh, we're a much better side than being in Division 3, and that's kind of the challenge we set as a group. We said, look, we're a much better side than this, and we need to dominate games of cricket in Division 3, and um, we've gone out and, and done that, knowing that the importance of winning and the habit of winning um, leading into the, tomorrow um, can have a huge effect on confidence for everyone. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been a good month. Um, and look, I, we're, we want to we want it to make it a great month uh, with a win tomorrow. Uh, I think you turned Two wins, sorry. <laughs> I think you turned, turned 30 earlier in the summer as well. Do you, do you sort of feel like you're heading into a new stage of your career where, you know, get the opportunity <laughs> to win a few trophies over the next few few months, especially? Yeah, thanks for that, Matt. Um, no, I... I it's exciting because I, I feel that in terms of clarity with my game, uh, I'm a lot more comfortable with where my game's at. Um, and they talk about batters coming kind of into your best years in your early 30s, really. And um, yeah, hopefully that is the case. I definitely feel like I'm heading that direction. And, and like I said, just at peace with where my game's at, really. Um, of course, there's always stuff that um, you want to work on and, and need to work on. But 
yeah, I, I think it's a really exciting time with what's coming up um, tomorrow, then the IPL, then the World Cup um, with Big Bash as well. I mean, some fantastic opportunities um, ahead and I'm very lucky to kind of be involved in those. So I'm really looking forward to that. And just lastly, on, on the World Cup, obviously, I don't know, it's a, a, you know, missed out in 2019, so it must be a pretty big thing for you to, to be part of that squad that got me the other day. Yeah, thankfully, my shoulder's in a bit better shape, touch wood. It stays that way. Um, yeah, it, it does, of course, mean uh, mean a lot to, to be back in that. And it's been a lot of kind of hard work and, um, yeah, a few changes along the way since then. And I've definitely moved my game on a lot uh, since that point. And any time to be in around a white ball squad um, with England, I mean, the depth that's on the show, it... it yeah, it's, it shows that you're in a good place um, because the competition for places is huge. And um, yeah, look, I'm really looking forward to it as, as is everyone else. So um, yeah, really exciting few months coming up.